And so for people with heart disease or heart ailments, particularly somebody who's had a recent heart attack, what we imagine is that this is going to be able to save them from going on to developing heart failure. So the take home message from our study is that we can grow enough human heart muscle in a dish now, starting with stem cells, that we can actually transplant it into an injured heart that is close to the size of a human being and we can restore the ability of that heart to pump blood. And this should give hope to people who are suffering from heart disease. What this therapy will do is actually strengthen the muscle itself. It will replace the damaged muscle that's been lost to disease. And that's going to be getting at the root cause like antibiotics do for infectious disease. Once a patient is diagnosed with heart failure, on average they have five years to live. So it's really quite a grave diagnosis and it's such a common one as well. It's such a common disease. We right now have about six million patients in the United States with heart failure and there's a million new ones diagnosed every year. And this is on the increase as we baby boomers are aging out. And so we need to do something to, to find a way to, to, to treat this as opposed to just managing it because it's breaking the bank right now. The heart is one of the least regenerative organs in the human body. So instead of growing back muscle after it's injured, it grows scar tissue. And so this leaves people with a deficiency in the strength of the organ. And so the heart can't pump enough blood to meet the body's needs. And this is called heart failure. And this is the number one killer in the whole world, number one killer in the United States. The major uh, advance since 2014 is what we call efficacy. Before we showed that it was feasible to transplant the cells and create new tissue in the wall of a large animal's heart. But here we show for the first time that this actually a is able to restore contractile function. So these animals don't go on and develop heart failure like they normally would after a heart attack. We can actually, in several of the animals, we've restored their heart function to within 90% of normal. All of our treatments currently for heart disease focus on managing symptoms rather than treating the root cause. We try to reduce people's blood volume with diuretics. We try to reduce blood pressure with beta blockers and other kinds of drugs, that sort of thing, to, to offload the heart to reduce its work. We're hoping that this will be a one-and-done therapy. Uh, the reason for that is that we're going to have to enter the, the circulatory system with a catheter, get up inside the heart, and do injections into the wall of the heart and that sort of thing. So it's a somewhat invasive procedure. It's not surgery, but it's like getting a coronary angiogram or something like that. And there is some risk associated with it, so we'd like to get it right the first time. It's a tremendously exciting thing to see this come from the, the first idea. It's been 20 years since the first human pluripotent stem cells were discovered. And immediately when that happened, the light bulb went on over my head and I thought, we can use this to rebuild people's hearts. Uh, the, what I never imagined was that it would take me 20 years to be this far along. My, I thought maybe five years, something like that. But it, so it's been a long road, but a tremendously interesting one. And it gets increasingly exciting the, uh, more, uh, the more we approach the clinic. And it makes us a little nervous also. The major findings of this study are that we can take stem cells, grow them up in large quantities, turn them into human heart muscle that beats on its own in a dish, and then take that beating human heart muscle and transplant it into the heart of an animal that's been given an experimental heart attack. And the muscle will take as a graft, it survives, it divides, it forms new muscle in the damaged wall of the heart, so it remuscularizes it, and it has a remarkable effect of being able to restore the mechanical function of the heart so that it pumps vigorously once again. We're expecting to do our first patients in 2020. So the, the biggest caveat we found in this study was that while these grafts are healing into the heart, that the heart goes through a period of electrical instability. Some of these animals developed an irregular rhythm and their heart began to race. 
And this is one of the things that we're going to have to work on because we don't want to do this in somebody's mother, or somebody's loved one, that sort of thing. And so we're, we, and we've, we've got some very good ideas, but we haven't quite got all the kinks ironed out of it yet. So it's not quite as pure as you're usually generating <laughs> for us. No, I usually go for 99.9. Nine swirling back and forth like this. So basically they have anchored themselves together and they've kind of lifted themselves. Are we doing fine, Randy? You are doing perfect. See, 